Once upon a time, as legend has it, the incredible Romanian weightlifter Nicu Vlad visited the US Olympic Training Center. Vlad was strong, probably as strong as any human being has ever been at a body weight of 220 pounds. Word on the street has it that he front squatted 700 pounds for a double. So when Vlad performed an exercise that no one had seen before, it quite naturally got a lot of attention from people not as strong as he was. The exercise involved taking the bar out of the rack from the hang position, stepping back to clear the rack and then lowering the bar down to the mid shins and raising it back up to the hang position. This movement looked like a deadlift, but one that started at the top instead of the bottom. So naturally, it had to have a new name. The term Romanian deadlift has been applied to it since then. Although, its name translated from the Romanian is probably something different. If it even has a Romanian name, the exercise has been developed since that day entirely in the USA and may simply have been Vlad's way of dealing with unfamiliar equipment. It is referred to by the initials RDL. The RDL has two important characteristics that distinguish it from its parent exercise. The first is that it is it uses very little quadriceps because the knees start off nearly straight, unlock but not very, and pretty much stay that way. So the quads don't have an opportunity to actively extend the knees during the movement. The RDL is specifically intended as a hip extension exercise and the quads are not supposed to be involved except to isometrically anchor the knee angle from the anterior. All the work that occurs through the bottom of the range of motion that would normally be shared between knee extensors and hip extensors is done only by the glutes and the hamstrings. The lower back muscles keep the lumbar spine locked in line with the pelvis. The hamstrings acting at their attachments on the ischial tuberosities cause rotation around the hip joints when they pull the bottom of the pelvis and the back of the knees together making the hamstring and glutes the prime movers during the exercise. And since the RDL uses the hamstring and glutes in an eccentric concentric contraction, they create much more delayed onset muscle soreness, DOMS, than deadlifts. But more important is the difference in the fundamental nature of the two movements. The deadlift starts with a concentric contraction as the bar is pulled from the floor and the eccentric face is not really emphasized because the lift is essentially over after it is locked out at the top. In contrast, the RDL is like the squat in that the movement starts with an eccentric contraction, the negative, which precedes the concentric. The bar starts from a position of knee and hip extension. The bar is lowered down into flexion and a stretch reflex initiates the concentric contraction back into extension. Any concentric contraction is stronger when it is preceded by this stretch reflex. Due to increased efficiency in motor unit recruitment and to the ability of the elastic components of the muscles and connective tissue, to store elastic energy developed during the eccentric lengthening of the muscle bellies. The RDL starts in the rack with pins set at a position a little lower than the level of the hands in the hang position. This rack position allows for an easy, safe return to the rack in the event of a slipping grip that might lower the bar before you rack it. With a clean width grip, grip Take the bar out of the rack and step back just far enough to clear the pins. 
Assume the same stance you use for a deadlift with heels 8 to 12 inches apart. Toes pointed slightly out. Raise your chest and focus your eyes on a point on the floor about 10 feet in front of you. The whole point of the RDL is that the back stays locked in extension while the hip extensions work. Unlock your knees so that a little tension comes into quads, but no more than enough to lower the bar an inch or two down the thighs. Very little knee angle change should occur. Although the position, although the knee position over the feet will change slightly, this position will place your knees above a point about halfway between the toes and the instep. Lift your chest up and arch your low back into a tight lock. Trying to maintain this position for the whole movement, start the bar down your thighs by shoving your hips back, allowing your hips to come into flexion with the bar never leaving the skin of the legs. At the same time, push your shoulders forward out in front of the bar so that familiar pulling position. As the bar approaches your knees, shove them back too, shifting the shins into a vertical position. Drop the bar down past your knees, keeping it in close contact with the shins and go as low as possible without unlocking your lower back. Stop just before you your back begins to unlock a position you will identify on the few first few reps and start back up. The stretch at the bottom should help change the direction of the bar without any pause. On the way up, keep the bar in contact with your legs and keep your chest and back locked in position. Breathe at the top, taking a big breath for every rep. Also common is the failure to hold the back rigid in absolute extension. One of the main benefits of the RDL is the isometric work it provides for the erectors. As they hold the spine rigid while the hamstring extend the hips. This back position is rather hard to hold and the lifter needs a lot of concentration to keep the chest up and the low back arched with no looseness. While sliding the hips back the knees back, the bar back, the heels down, and the shoulders forward. For a slow exercise, the RDL is technically difficult because it is very easy to do wrong. 